Anglican Church here fails for the third time to elect a new bishop. That's the top story in our Barbados Today Morning News update for Friday, June the 8th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. The Anglican Church here remains without a new bishop after a third attempt to elect a successor to the retired John Holder. Last night, the elective synod ended their polling in a stalemate. As was the case on the previous occasions, synod members of the House of Laity did not budge in their support for 45-year-old Reverend John Rogers, the younger of the two candidates nominated, while the priests who make up the House of Clergy maintain their backing for Dean of St. Michael's Cathedral, 61-year-old Dr. Jefferson Gibson. Neither of the candidates was able to garner the requisite two-thirds majority at the end of two rounds of voting that began at 5.30 p.m. at the Christ Church Parish Church Centre. Now, the diocesan administrator, Canon Wayne Isaacs, who chaired the five-and-a-half-hour proceedings, told reporters another attempt would be made to elect a bishop at a date to be announced. He also explained that the church had until August the 28th to choose a bishop before the decision is referred to the House of Bishops for the final say. He downplayed suggestions that the constant stalemates reflected a serious division in the church. No, I don't see it. No, I think there's a process to be followed. And the process is we must receive two thirds in both houses. That is the process. And there's nothing we can do about that here to show that we have to receive two thirds in both houses. So it, it might appear as though we are in confusion, but we are just allowing the process to run In other news now, a day after the island's largest public sector union said, it was prepared to accept a 4.5% wage offer from the government. The International Monetary Fund yesterday warned of a need to contain wages and reduce transfers to state-owned enterprises. At the same time, the Washington-based institution is warning the mere motley led administration of the need for substantial fiscal consolidation and reforming of the government pensions even as government promises to increase contributory and non-contributory pensions. Meanwhile, the IMF has recommended an overhaul of the operations of the state-owned transport board, including an increase in current bus fares from $2 to $5 per passenger. Barbados Today has obtained a copy of the 58-page technical assistance report, which was prepared last December by a five-member team from the IMF's Fiscal Affairs Department following an assessment carried out last October at the request of the then Minister of Finance, Chris Sinclair. However, the IMF report entitled Promoting Fiscal Sustainability and Transparency of State-Owned Enterprises acknowledged the need for a differential bus fare to protect the vulnerable groups such as the elderly. An elderly Grisette St. Michael resident says he is currently living in fear that his home could cave in at any moment now, owing to a massive hole that has developed at the back of his property. However, despite repeated appeals to the local authorities for help, 73-year-old Julian Headley, who has been resident in the Grisette's industrial estate for the past 50 years, said absolutely no one has come to his rescue, not even his parliamentary representative, Ronald Topping, who he said had promised during the recent election campaign that if elected to power on May the 24th, he would ensure that his plight was addressed. Headley, who is living in a government housing unit, said he discovered the hole in December 2015, and neither Topping nor anyone from the Ministry of Housing has been to see him. Tony Bodyway in um, the fellow from Urban, mm -hmm. Troy, and he tell me if, if he start long, call him back. Okay, go through the game, and if it's long or short, but I know him long, long, long. And it's 2018 right now. Persistent efforts to reach Topping were unsuccessful. In sports, Sri Lanka go into day three today of their first test match against the West Indies in Trinidad, trailing the regional team's first inning score by 383 runs and three wickets down. Wendy's declared on 414 for eight, with Shane Dowish hitting an unbeaten 125. The home team's pacers then came to the party, with Kima Roche 
Shannon Gabriel and Jason Holder picking up a wicket apiece to leave the visitors struggling at 31 for three at Stumps. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. Guyana's President David Granger has all but apologized to public workers for not being able to significantly increase their salaries. Granger assured the workers who received staggered increases of 8 and 6% last year that better will be done once the economic situation improves. Salaries have increased not as much as you would like. But when you are facing a situation in which you are bailing out an ailing industry at nearly a billion dollars a month, you realize that money is hard to find. Mr. Granger said it is his wish that public servants earn a decent living wage. But because of the state of certain sectors, his government has no other option but to be mindful of how it manages its finance. And I don't want to be faced with the type of situation one of my colleagues is faced with in the Caribbean, in the West Indies there. Uh, I've never seen such a, a tale of woe. And on the international scene, leaders of the group of seven rich nations headed for a summit in Canada on Thursday, more divided than at any time in the group's 42-year history, as U.S. President Donald Trump's America First policies risk causing a global trade war and deep diplomatic schisms. The sweeping green hills and river vistas of Quebec's Charlevoix region are an idyllic spot for this year's G7, but the meeting itself is not looking as peaceful as its setting. I'm Justin Mitchell in La Malbier, Quebec, where just up the road this weekend, U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to bring his hard line on trade to the yearly G7 summit with the other leaders of the world's top economies. That means this beautiful strip of eastern Canada, where residents can bike and jog alongside spectacular views of the St. Lawrence River, is suddenly ground zero for Trump's quest to reboot the U.S. image on the world stage, no matter who it alienates. Almost every one of the top U.S. allies at the meeting this year, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the United Kingdom, have a bone to pick with Trump. But the big beef is trade. Canada has been very difficult to deal with. As shipping freighters rumble by less than a mile away, Trump faces Canada's leader Justin Trudeau as the U.S. is in the midst of tense negotiations with Canada and Mexico over the North American Free Trade Agreement. And that's news and sports. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.